The last time Bitcoin broke through this level of resistance, we saw a 13% rally toward the upside. Will Bitcoin repeat history or will the bears reclaim control? Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, Miguel team, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. In today's video, we are taking a look at the short-term price action, the recent breakout of the four-week-long downtrend, the high time frame charts, and so much more. Before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit that con button, and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos of Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical, and the structural information. No hype. No BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you are interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the first link down below. You will get access to charts, updates, videos, educational posts, news events, and everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency with Bitcoin and the relevant economic news. If you are interested in taking your trading to the next level, join us on VIP. We post training setups with exact entries, targets, and stop losses, including access to group chats and so much more. If you're interested in finding out more information, contact me via the pinned comment of the free channel or click these links to our trading track record or even a video showing you absolutely everything you need to know about what VIP is and what you'll get access to. So check that out if you were interested in it and let's dive on in. So taking a look at the market data, 24 hour volume is up 20% sitting at 99 billion. 24 hour liquidations up 3% sitting at just over 100 million. Of the 100 million in liquidations, 49 million have come from longs and 53 million have come from short positions. Taking a brief look at the last 24 hours of price action, we can see a fair bit of chop happening over here at this critical level of resistance. We can see Bitcoin managed to break through this level of resistance two times, but in both instances failing to sustain above this level on the higher time frames. This has resulted in two separate corrections, one that we saw resulting in a move to 62.6k and the current one which we are seeing at the moment around 62.8k. So we saw a lot of high leverage longs enter upon the breakout only to get liquidated on the way down, a lot of high leverage shorts enter on the way down only to get liquidated on the way up, which again is indicative of both sides of the market being liquidated, which we can see in our results over here, the market data suggesting that. Moving over to the broader market, so DXY is still under a major eight month long downtrending diagonal resistance. Now this downtrending diagonal resistance is actually a very significant one. If we haven't mentioned already, this eight month downtrending diagonal resistance is inverse correlation to the current bull market for uptrend, the bull market uptrend for Bitcoin. If we look at this bull market uptrend, it started in October 2023. If we look at the downtrend for the DXY, it started in October 2023. It has been eight months spanning the entire length of the current bull market. So we have this point of inverse correlation, this data point we could look out for if we were to see a break up for the DXY, that could potentially be very worrisome for this bull market uptrend for Bitcoin. Again, at the moment, while we are underneath this downtrend, resistance is resistance until it is not, but paying attention to the DXY over the coming weeks. Moving over to the S&P 500, looking all right over here, like we annotated in our video yesterday, there are a few, a few different possible scenarios over here. We do have our local lows over here, one more over here, another over here, and again, you can see two more local lows over here. As you can see with these local lows, they of course have all been higher lows, which is indicative of a current uptrend. Furthermore, if we look at the prior highs, we have broken through every single one of these major highs, resulting in trend continuations. This pattern has been present since October 2022 to present. And therefore, if we wanted to see a actual reversal in the trend, we would need to see this current pattern invalidate. We would need to see a prior high break down. If we were to see a breakdown of that prior high, that would be the first sign of high time frame trend weakness or potential reversal that we would have seen this entire market so far. So, watching out for a breakdown of that 5,300 level for a potential reversal sign. If we do see that, we could very well see a correction back down to our prior lows. And if we lose our prior low, well, we could see a correction to 4,600. However, while we sit above that prior high, the expectation 
is that we see directional continuations upwards and any correction that results in a move sustaining above the prior high would be considered a healthy high time frame pullback. Those are the current expectations. With that being said, let's jump into Bitcoin. A quick word from BitUnix and BingX before we do. Okay guys, I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two major exchanges we use on this channel, BitUnix and BingX. If you sign up to either of these exchanges using my referral links down below, you'll get a lifetime 15% trading fee discount, including up to $5,000 in bonus trading rewards. BitUnix is a global access non-KYC exchange, providing services to absolutely everyone, from every country on the globe. With over 200 different trading pairs and access to 125x leverage, BitUnix have solidified themselves as one of the best exchanges you can trade on as a cryptocurrency day trader. BingX, similar to BitUnix, offers over 200 different trading pairs and up to 125x leverage. With a fantastic interface, the only downside of BingX is if you are from the U uh, USA, from Canada, the Netherlands, or from Singapore, you will need a VPN to access this exchange. So go ahead and join me on BitUnix and BingX and sign up with my links for 15% discounts and $5,000 in trading rewards. Hey guys, let's go ahead and jump into Bitcoin starting on the short term chart. So we'll keep today's video nice and short and sharp. As we can see guys, Bitcoin was able to break out of that four week long downtrending diagonal resistance, which is a fantastic sign. It's a fantastic sign of strength as an indication for the first time in four weeks, we have seen a move that could facilitate a high time frame reversal or reversal in the strength of the direction of the trend and potentially put the ball back in the court of the bulls. Very good to see. However, nothing is smooth sailing. Nothing is cut and dry. There is always critical levels of resistance and support in any directional move we see. So let's discuss the current level of resistance and what Bitcoin will need to do to break above it and what impact we will see if we do. So let's take a look. The current level of resistance Bitcoin is retesting is going to be that level of resistance from 63 to $63.4 thousand dollars. This is a resistance we have seen act in the past, particularly back in May, the mid-May period in 2024. We saw two separate rejections from this level only to see a breakthrough of this resistance, which resulted in a very strong, okay, 14% move toward the upside, a very healthy 14% move toward the upside. We remained above this support level now for a very extended period of time until we finally came back down to retest this level once again on the 21st of June. We bounced from this level, acting as a period of support, only then to finally reject and break down from this level. And when we saw the breakdown from a level, we saw a very healthy or we should see a very steep correction around 7.9% toward the downside. So, looking at the two points of which we have retested and broken through was number one, 7.9%, and number two, 13%, we can identify this level as a trigger point as historically the two times we have seen the price breach this level has resulted in strong directional moves. And therefore, it would be wise to assume that if we were to break through this level of resistance again, we would see a strong directional move as we have seen in the past. So... Let's take a look at it in a little bit more detail. If we were to break through this resistance, we would need to see a four hour close above this resistance level. Again, if we look at the prior breakouts and prior breakdowns, all of these originated from four hour closes. We are still looking for a four hour close above this resistance to suggest the price is sustained above this level of resistance for long enough to increase the probabilities that this resistance will turn to support and we will see a directional continuation. Remember with time frames, it is not a particular time frame validates the breakout. It is more so the longer the price is able to sustain above a support or below resistance, the more likely that resistance or support will be respected, okay? So we can't validate, but we can increase the likelihood 
of those levels being respected based on the time close or the amount of time the price action has remained above these particular levels. So, if we were to see a breakout of this resistance, we are looking for directional continuations into our next level of resistance, which is around that $67,000 region. Now, if we do zoom out again, you will remember the $67,000 region is in fact the exact midpoint, the midline, the mid-level, okay, of resistance of the horizontal consolidation. This mid-level resistance of the horizontal consolidation, the exact midpoint between the range high and the range low. So 67,000 being a major point of resistance that we are looking for a retest if we were to break above. What we can see on the eight hour chart is the price action is rejecting from that resistance as well as that 50 EMA. So once again, if we were to break above this level, this would be essentially the first positive shift in the 50 EMA that we have seen since we broke through prior in that breakout region in May 14th. So again, you can see we broke out from this region of resistance as well as the 50 EMA, resulting in surges of volatility and resulting in that directional continuation. Again, the distance between the price action candles and the 50 EMA is a representation of short-term volatility, okay? And if we do take a look over here, we are now retesting in a similar fashion. So a break out of this region will validate a directional continuation higher. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the short-term charts and discuss what is happening on the immediate term price action. If we zoom into a very small time frame, guys, we can see Bitcoin is establishing a horizontal region. So let's go ahead and draw out that horizontal range on the charts right now so we can get a nice understanding of what is occurring. This is going to be our range high resistance, okay? This is going to be our range low support. Let's go ahead and draw that in. These are our levels, our trigger points for our directional moves. Of course, guys, if we see a break under our sell side liquidity at 62.5K, we would expect to see a short-term correction to potentially come back down and retest. Let's go ahead and take a look at the prior level of horizontal resistance on the Bitcoin chart, which was sitting right over here at 62.1k. So let's zoom back in now that we have that level actually lined up. We can see a directional breakdown of 62.5. The sell side liquidity could result in a short term correction to that 62k region. While this level is able to sustain as support, we are expecting directional continuations upwards and through our range high as this is a horizontal consolidation which we broke into from the bottom side. So when we break into a horizontal consolidation from the bottom side up, the probabilities of directional continuations through the consolidation in the same direction we entered consolidation significantly increases. If we were to see that break upwards, like we said, Bitcoin is very likely to go up and retest that $67,000 region. If we zoom out, we also can see we have developed some weak version of a falling expanding wedge. Now, the reason I say this is a weak version as the trend angle between our current downtrend and our current down trending support is more similar than not. The greater the separation in the trend angle, the stronger the falling expanding wedge, okay? The less variation between the trend angle of the two parallel trend lines, the weaker the variation and thus the weaker the falling expanding wedge. If we were to take a measured move from point number one, which is our first high, to point number two, which is the initial retest of the downtrend, and apply that to the breakout point, this gives us a measured move, which takes us up to that 67,000 region, as well as that POC level. So again, we have confluence over here, suggesting that if we break through our horizontal level, we could expect to see directional continuations higher. If we break through this diagonal, which we have, we are seeing a measured move, expecting around the same level and on the short term we even have got that horizontal consolidation telling us that if we do remain above 62,000 we are expecting short-term continuations higher so overall short-term charts are looking healthy let's talk about the bearish case scenario now if Bitcoin were to break back underneath the 
level of resistance, or should I say the level of support at 62,000, which is this level over here, that would be a strong sign of weakness. So remember, Bitcoin was able to break through the diagonal level, okay? The diagonal level is no longer a level of support. It is a trigger point. Diagonals are not supports, they are trigger points, okay? So they are points of which the trend can shift. We're not looking at it for a level of support. We are watching our horizontal levels here. If we were to break back below the horizontal level at 62K, that would tell us that this whole entire move through the diagonal trend line and up into the 63 to 64k resistance was a unable to sustain. We would then expect a correction back into that 60k region, okay? That is the bearish case scenario. A loss of that 62k region facilitates a move back to 60k or around about 60k. Now remember, we could theoretically see a short-term correction into that 62k region and then see a continuation upwards that is perfectly fine it is just we do not want to see breakdowns or significant losses of that $62,000 region. Let's go ahead now and move over to higher time frame charts. Weekly chart like we said is looking very good. There's really one definitive difference between good and bad over here and that is going to be are we above 60,000 right? Are we above 60,000 the weekly? If we are above 60,000, it is good. Support is still support. If we are below 60,000, it is bad. We are underneath that level of support. It becomes a level of resistance. It also tells us that the entirety of accumulation that was occurring above 60,000 is potentially distribution and we could see that continuation lower. So again, above 60,000, bullish, expect higher. Below 60,000, bearish expect lower moving over to that higher time frame chart once more over here let's go over to a 12 hour chart if we do zoom out we can see the lower targets for bitcoin will be 52,000 if we break down from 60 and the upper targets for bitcoin based on a measured move of the current horizontal consolidation would be into that 80 to 85,000 dollar region based on the measured move of the horizontal consolidation those will be the targets for Bitcoin. Moving over to the total, the total is looking good. Again, similar to Bitcoin, it is bullish if we are sitting simply above this horizontal support. It is bearish if we drop below it. Keep it simple. We don't need to overcomplicate it. The total three mark cap is looking decent. Again, not looking fantastically bullish. Altcoins definitely did take a bit of a beating. We would like to see this RSI trend line on the RSI break. As we can see, you can read those annotations over here to see directional continuations. If we were to lose this uptrend, we could see another sell-off for all coins towards our $46 billion level of $460 billion level of support. However, while we remain above this uptrend, we could definitely see strength return and price continue. That is it, guys, for today's analysis. I wanted to keep today's one short and sharp. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll catch you guys on Thursday. See you then.